the season comes. And um, you, were, you were talking about the facility and some of the obstacles you had with practice and stuff, but it's your first year as a head coach at Jefferson, and why don't you take us through that? All right, uh, as I've gone through uh, other coaches, things that made coaching successful, why did they have a good record? What did they do? Well, they had a good reputation. We didn't have a reputation here. We were just right. starting out. We didn't have a gym until February 14th. And so we practiced at Kennedy, we practiced at uh, Normandale, we practiced at Olsen Junior High at 5.30 in the morning. I was gonna say, but the times were pretty. Oh, and we got a lot of ankle sprains, stuff like that, colds and everything. Long days, and sure. kids come back to classroom. You know, finally, February 14th, we had our first home game. Uh, no bleachers on one side, bleachers on one side only, but it was a home game. And so we didn't know how to take that. And I don't remember the score of that game. It was just a easier traveling, no bus. <laughs> from long, long range, go it! 74-75 was a very, very successful and powerful team that you had. Um, and you guys did eventually get to the state tournament that year, but you you had mentioned that might have been one of your best teams ever. I think we were. We had a, well, the next year team won the state championship, but they were being pushed by these kids. They were juniors. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, you gotta get over that hump. At the outset, underneath, and all alone is Winham. Turn around, jumper tried to bank it, no good, crucial rebounds, no good again, gets his own rebound, puts it up and in. They dump it out to Peterson. Jefferson with the basketball, 44 seconds remaining on the clock. Peterson for two. 35-34, as the lead continues to seesaw back and forth. Cover, underhand, layup is good. Jefferson. Drop pass for Loris for two, and he's fouled. And with a one-point lead now. Loris underneath, he gets it to Favre, up and in. Behind the back dribble, gets it across the timeline, dropped it underneath, Lingenfelder, two points, and he's fouled. 2.46 left to go in the basketball game. Peterson underneath. The basket will count. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is George Vasilio with Dick Bird at the St. Paul Civic Center, and this is the big one. I think a lot of well, why the 76 team won the state championship? Because of the 75 team. That got them prepared for it. Rattling long range and goes back. Pretty shot. First lead for the Jaguars. I just remember when Dave hit that shot, we finally had the lead. Uh, you just feel the <clears> momentum <throat> shifting towards us. Um, all of a sudden, I, I just couldn't miss in the fourth quarter. And I, don't, I wasn't doing anything different. The ball was just going in. So they got feeding it to me, which was very nice. Way to live. I think I got 12 assists in the fourth quarter. <laughs> to all the laying it. <laughs> Working in the Ligenfelter. Short he range, it. he hits it. Looking at the uniforms, they'd be Arrested now for a little short. <laughs> John Redica, starter for Hibbing. Redica, man of many moves, feeds it back outside and gets his own rebound and puts it up. Her uh, thing, he says, you, you guys got one of the best hotel lobby teams on the, on the planet. You guys look really good going through the lobby. And, and we did. I mean, we had lots of tall kids, but we knew that if somebody threw the ball inside, that Kevin would usually block it. And all of a sudden, uh, the ball went into uh, Steve Lingenfelter, and he kind of spun and threw up a hook shot, left-handed hook shot, over Kevin's, Kevin's outstretched arm, and it went in. And so uh, about two or three of those happened, and all of a sudden we started looking, uh-oh. That was the, what I remember yeah. most is that Kevin McHale picture in Boston Celtics and Magic Johnson shooting the hook shot in the lane to win the game. That was, I see Steve Lingenfelter shooting that same hook shot in the middle of the lane. Skyhook, Lingenfelter, nice touch, it goes. Redica trap, turns it over. Here's what we like to see. Brent Knight, fast break. That was the year of our 51 defense, state tournament. All three teams scored 51. Right, <laughs> which was Ling's number. It's ironic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Bradlin retaliates from the right side. 
Al Hutchinson free. Hi, they've used Link a lot at the high post so far tonight. Mark Norman, nice bucket. It's going to count. We've got a foul. Mikhail been a, has been a big factor on the board so far. Feed underneath. Norman, nice pass by Ligenfelter. They're trying to get the pass break going. As soon as they clear the board, they get that outlet pass very nicely. Brent Knight in the corner. Maybe Brent Knight will have to start picking up the slack a little bit. Quick passing, good passing, good feed into Kevin McHale. And then I remember Kevin McHale coming to line. Yeah. Just a classy, yeah. uh, classy thing and thank, congratulating him. Yeah. He had really? been crying. Yeah. Could, his yeah. eyes were all red. And yeah, he came in and, and. Just a class guy. Yeah, he did, Lingy. He individually would come up and, and one by one, Hutch, Lingy, Bratz, and shook our hand. Fondest memory from 76. It's got to be the winning the state championship and, and being in the locker room after the game and just thinking that we finally, everything we talked about for a year had come to fruition. You know, it wasn't a, we weren't like jumping up and down and going crazy. It was just a quiet satisfaction. Everybody's hugging each other and this is like, wow, can you believe it? we're state champions? Yeah, it was that by far. Jefferson throws the ball high, tipped around. That's it. That's it. The state champions of 1976, the Jefferson Jaguars, 60 to 51. Ball game. Uh, part of such a historical program has been an honor. I was looking up in, in the gym and starting to look back at the success that took place. It's super impressive. Um, and then after going through this, the program here and looking back and talking to other people and you, you understand the respect that everyone has for the program and, and the Evans family. I mean, you guys were so you were just sharp, well coached, classy, and uh, tough to beat. We always liken it to going to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good analogy. That's a good analogy. <laughs> and we almost, in my time here, has had more talent, but you know, it was probably 50-50 to win or not because yeah. they had a better prepared team. And, you know, we're pretty good at what we do, but they're the best. Jefferson has never lost a state championship game. They're 4-0 in the finals. Dominating the league, dominating the state in basketball was just what Jefferson did, and, and we expected nothing less when we got there, and I think it drove us to want to be a part of that success story. It was very special to play at Jefferson. Athletically, overall, people ask you when you graduated, and if you say you're from the 80s, that starts a whole different conversation of state championships that were won, and right. um, you know, just the respect that Jefferson basketball had back then was amazing. I'm joined by Coach Jack Evans and Coach Jeff Evans, the only two head coaches in the history of the program. I know nothing else except the Evans and Jefferson basketball, and that's pretty an amazing, pretty amazing thing. I can't sit, I can't think of anybody else probably anywhere in the country that has that same synergy of father to son for, for 40, 50 years. Well, I think when you mention all of those things, how blessed we have been to be here, uh, both of us, Jeff and I, and uh, to have had talent uh, like we've had, and uh, players that are willing to work hard to achieve these things, and those are all plus factors for coaches to see that happen. Despite a 16-game winning streak and an outstanding record, Jefferson, somewhat a surprise entry this year. Head coach Jack Evans done a great job rebuilding this team. The Jaguars lost eight seniors and four starters through graduation. John Lynch here, the only returning starter, he leads the team in scoring and rebounding. Jefferson's third trip to the state in seven years. They won the title in 76. Head coach Evans has found his present team to be a group of quiet winners. They're, they're a very, very quiet bunch. Last year's team was just the opposite, a little more outgoing. And they really don't say a heck of a lot. Practice or off the floor or on the floor, uh, very quiet. And I would like to see a little bit more of emotion shown, but uh, they certainly performed during the, the course of the year, and so I can't knock that. 
So you talked about the 81-82 team and you were saying that they were a good group of guys that were good athletes, but their greatest asset was how well they played together. And that really seemed to be a theme throughout your entire team here. Your ability to get kids, or find kids in that case, that could play so well together. The amazing Jefferson Jaguars. Lynch, banks it in. John Lynch, got it. Boy, what a player. I think the big thing that, that I remember from those days is one guy, John Lynch. He could jump, he could shoot, he could use both hands. It was almost like he was ambidextrous. And, you know, guarding him was, I thought I could jump a little bit, but I, uh, I stopped halfway up and he kept going, so. <laughs> the rumor is that Coach said something to, to Johnny at some point in that game and just said, you know, I mean, team player, unselfish, but kind of like, this is, this is a moment that, you know, we, we need you to score. You know, I don't know what the exact words were, but in that second half, there, there was a light under him that he just never turned on. He could have, but all of a sudden he had guys in his face, you know, sweeping the ball through, taking tough shots, and made like three or four in a row. And it was just, to me, that was the, I mean, it's just, I get goosebumps now thinking about it. Lynch, got it! And then we get a lead, and then they start fouling, and then this man takes over from there. And they foul Mott Bryant, who's been hotter than a pistol. I remember it was 49-47 Jefferson with less than two minutes left. And then Greg Montbriant happened. Who taught you how to shoot free throw? I don't know. I've been in a slump out of late, but I just relaxed and just tried to put the crowd on my nut, out of my mind and sunk them. Got a boat! Tommy and Greg Montbriant and Steve Hill, they all grew up together. Right. Those guys were playing basketball in my driveway. I lived in on Utica in Bloomington. This kid who I watched grow up, Mount Bryan, knock off 10 straight free throws, and that and the 2-3 zone really uh, spelled the end for a great Duluth East team. And you know, the other thing was you guys pressed the whole game. For as tired as we were after the Chaska game, the last thing we wanted to do was be pressed the whole game. It seemed to me like Duluth East was just a little bit more tired. Maybe that had something to do with it. Well, I don't know. We hope that maybe these guys have something to do with yeah, it, too. Yeah, that's true. But it was one of the great thrills of my life to be the announcer, the play-by-play -play guy, to watch the Jaguars win that tournament. It's over! And the championship goes back to Bloomington Jefferson. 59-51. So in, in 83, Jefferson and Edina just seemed to always be on a collision course that year. We played Jefferson all the way up, and it was an intense rivalry, but the guys liked each other. And we get to the region final, and you talk about up and down emotions, and at the end of the game, Rob Wassner hits a shot, which would have been a three now, nowadays, on the top of the key, and the Dyna goes up one. Wassner puts one in from 25 feet, and oh my gosh, the plates are up. And you guys come down, and a shot goes up on the backside, and Chris West tips it in with about three seconds Three left. seconds to go, I guess. Three seconds left. And so you go into the huddle in a situation like that. What do you tell them, the guys? Well, we just said we're not going to let them get the ball in, up the floor. We're going to front them inbound pass, and you're fronting everybody there, and you make them come back to get the ball, not advance down there where you throw a long pass. And so with that in mind, Wazdauer does get the pass in the sideline. And I don't know how many feet he traveled before he shot the ball. And my wife to this day will say that the time ran out. Unless, no, the time didn't run out. <laughs> it was just a shot that was less than to go in. Three ticks of the clock remain. Jefferson 36, Edina 35. Rick, you were inbounding. And you made just a slight hesitation. Chris West was all over you. A slight hesitation just to get him to shift. I think I was fake left and just to get him moving one direction. And then, you know, I know I'm going to throw it on the run. And, and Rick hits me in stride. I'm going to my left toward the crowd, toward the sideline. And Ray tried to take the foul. And then that freed me up for one free dribble. And I had one dribble to reorient my hips, my shoulders. And you got to just throw it up there. And as the ball left my hand, in my mind, I was thinking, I got a shot. It's Ray there. Inbounds the ball to Wassenauer. He lets a bomb go. It's in! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh! I don't believe it! 
So of course there's a secret that we know about that shot that not a lot of people do know is that Rob would hold pre-practice and post-practice three uh, half-court shooting contests. <laughs> and it went on pretty much all year, right? Yeah, you got to have some fun. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. As I'm still working on my free throws because they were so bad, these guys are having fun doing three, you know, half-court shooting contests. And you guys made a lot of them. You know, I, I, if it was something you had never shot before, eh, we're in trouble. Yeah. But he had done this many times, many times. I never envisioned it for that scenario. <laughs> yeah, <laughs>I think we were talking here about togetherness and teams playing as, as a team. And we had a lot of kids that probably could have been, and yourself and your, your group too, it could have been outstanding scores or this or that. But the team concept was more important. And, and that's why they were successful. You guys had such good chemistry too, man. You guys just seemed like you guys knew where each other's were. You're a Mr. Basketball that averaged 12 points a game. You know what I mean? How often do you see that where you go, okay, the best <laughs> player in the state doesn't score a lot, but he's on the best team. He's clearly the best player, but yeah. you guys just had a really good balance yeah. group of guys. A total team on and off the floor. They still do a lot of things together. And, and that, 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 that's important. I wish that you could see more of that with kids today. I have never seen, I don't think, a high school team play as a unit with as much poise as Bloomington Jefferson does. We were all good friends, the core of our team. We were all best friends. And uh, those summers were, we had some vicious three-on-three -three games in Lincoln's driveway. And we all just loved basketball. And there's something different between high school sports and college sports. You know, high school, you know, you're playing for, you know, not only area of your city, but you're playing for your city and you play with these kids growing up. And, um, you know, so you have all these years backed up of building these relationships with, with these guys that you consider your best friends or brothers. Like the, the off the court stuff with this group was, was always pretty good. Just messing with you guys at practice and um, messing with Volley any chance we could. <laughs> that, kind of, that kind of stuff uh, was pretty good humor. We were all best friends. That was what was so cool about it. I don't know that there's a lot of programs throughout the years where everybody gets along and everybody's not fighting for playing time. We had a bunch of kids that just loved playing together, loved being friends. I mean, just being a 14-year-old, just a young kid, not really knowing what to expect. I had no idea what I was getting myself into coming in and playing in the Lake Conference. And, and uh, Vodre was awesome. He was a guy that never was like, you know, I'm not gonna teach you anything. He kind of brought me under his wing and was like, hey, I'm here to help you and we're gonna try to win as many games as we can. We need you and, you know, I always had to guard like Spencer Tollickson and Ryan Amoroso just because, you know, he didn't want to do that. <laughs> he had done it over the years so many times. He's like, ah, you go for it. I remember um, coming in here, and you look at the law and all the state championships and titles and stuff like that. And, you know, when I initially came in here, that was what awed me. But what changed my mind with the relationships was one thing, and it's something we still do. It's the alumni game at Christmas. And that first experience I had when I saw 40, 50 guys sitting here lacing their shoes up, I'm like, it's a lot more than just that. On Christmas Eve day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot more than just that. So now you get to 85, you get to this run, 85, 86, 87. That was a good team. It was a very good team, and we, uh, we got beat by two, I think it was. 52, 50 or something like that, if I remember. Against White Bear Lake. Yeah. And White Bear Lake was on a two year. They won about 50 in a row, I guess, something yeah. like that. I do remember that game. That was a tough game. I think both teams were tight. I think both yeah. teams were tight because there was so much history between the teams and the players and everything else that I think we were just waiting for the last couple of minutes of that game to see how it was going to shake out.
you have another amazing team coming in. And I think 85 team, you guys won the conference, and then you finished third place. But the 86 team, you guys didn't win the conference. Hits it across for Lynch, makes the jumper. There he goes. We go from number one in the state, 4-0, and to 4-2, and two, and kind of out of the rankings. And then we kind of straightened things out for a while. But that team took a little while to kind of figure it out mm -hmm. that season. Then we went on a tear and won like 12 games in a row. Coaching the Jaguars, Jack Evans. And then you get to the final there then, and, and that was another tight one with Central in the final game. Right. Picked off by Radosevic. Last break by Duluth Central, in goes Horner, what a move! For me, what I remember most about that game is, even though you guys were in a zone, normally zones, you know, there's not that a lot of physicalness to when it comes to it. But it was a really physical game. Pearson has it knocked loose. Here's a chance for the Jaguars. Monson goes in, back to block it is Horner. Lynch to turn around. We get uh, fouled down at the, the end. This is the big one. John Walker makes a free throw with three or four seconds to go or something. And seals the Real deal. Clutch free throw, yeah. He gets them both. Well, I don't know, I think every basketball player at one time in the gym sits there and pretends he has the chance to ice a championship game with free throws, and I guess it paid off because I was able to do it. No timeout. They don't have to throw it in. And that's the ball game. Another one-point win. This time it's Bloomington Jefferson that ends Duluth Central's unbeaten season. Yeah, that was a special night. You know, when I look back on my high school days, I, I think a lot about senior year in 87 was special. But uh, a lot of that kind of... Uh, was built on what happened in 85 and 86 too. Central likes to go into him and then work it back out or have him go to the bucket. He hasn't been able to get started yet as Monson hits the jumper. That's by Pearson. Over Pearson for the bucket. Berg wiggles three. Berg has three and we're tied again. Huge three Berg. Over Stellmacher. Oh, and Lynch. For Walker over Pearson. Rebound to Flick. Big offensive rebound for David Flick. Berg. It's short. Walker rebounds over Radosevich. Now Nehrud puts it in. Nehrud has 10 points. Walker. Turnaround jumper. Classic form. And now will the 1986 Class AA basketball champions come forward to receive the championship trophy. <laughs> Bloomington Jefferson, state champions, boys basketball, Class AA. Well, 87, I think, well, that was an unusual year, too, because, uh, you know, they were talented coming in there and expected to do very well. But uh, the work ethic, I guess, even though that you have a lot of success, sometimes it's easy not to perform up to your ability. Right. But uh, every 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 practice, I enjoy practices. And your dad did too, as much as we enjoyed practices almost as much as game. Well, they're they're still my closest friends. My high school my high school Tom from Tom Bata to Rob DeCourcy, Mike Shear who lives in Hawaii now, mm -hmm. he's still one of my my closest friends and. Yeah, I mean, I just think there's a bond that forms, you know, from young, those young ages, you know, when we were growing up. I mean, I'm a believer, and maybe not everybody sees it this way, that that when you do, we, what we did was special. Jurgens fishing off, and Lynch again. Well, you're going to give me the shot, I'll take it. Batum. The spirit of the whole season was we're not going to be stopped. This game has been mostly outside, but there it is a nice steal. play. Oh, Look Lynch. at the pass by Lynch to Nehru. I, I remember going nose to nose with Walker at one time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, and they came over and it took for, for a jump ball. Jump ball. Just a tie up. Yeah, and we just ripped each other off and then we just both you know, <laughs> chest to chest. And, you know, I was looking up, of course, but. <laughs> Turnovers in the corner. Well, we got some words going on nose to nose. Looks like a couple heavyweight fighters at the weigh in. Kev had a big dunk. He you know, tore everything open. Carver off Ars door, picked off by Lynch. Here goes. It was all business for me. And plus, you know, we're undefeated and having the season we were having. And it was just it was almost a magical season in some ways. At least that's my memory of it now. 
up for the rebound, resulting in a jump situation. Nayrud, Nayrud scoring off the inbounds play. Off for Bata. Now yeah, Bata gets off the mark. Bata and Lynch. Following Shear. What a pass by Lynch. Up the circle, watch by Remy, in for Shear, back for Lynch. Jump shot right wing. There's Bata. Mismatch there with Fisher. Nice move by Lynch. Hey, Root, big rebound by Jensen. Jensen again fights for the rebound, puts it up, still won't go. Jensen again puts it up and drives it home. That is determination, Mike Jensen. At the buzzer, it's no so good, and that is the end of the ball game. And Wilmington Jefferson has won the AA championship with a 54 to 37 win over the Bengals of Lane. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1987 State AA Boys Basketball Champion is Bloomington Jefferson. We were fortunate that we had some good talent over the years. I mean, you know, develop records like we had, or the kids had, without having some good talent. And we're not working hard. Practices were intense, practices were tough, very demanding, um, which is exactly what kids need and I think what kids want. They yeah. want somebody who pushes you to be the best you can be. They want somebody who is disciplined and has a philosophy and runs things the right way. I remember the walkthroughs, we would go with him for, with Jimmy a couple times, it would be an hour long. <laughs> Not many of the guys liked that, but we were always really prepared. You know, I went to the Minnesota Vikings practice yesterday and watched them down at the, the new place. And I said to my son, I'm like, there. So this is easier than the high school practice. They weren't even running them. I mean, Jack ran us. Jack got our team in shape. We were in condition. We, uh, we practiced very hard, and we told them that from the beginning. And we're practicing for that third game in the state tournament. I always used to see them, they had a night off, they'd be up there scouting. I mean, they were the best scout scouters, I think, in the league. Very meticulous. The scouting part was great. Jack and I uh, would never hesitate to scout. If we could go scout somebody and we could see them, we felt much more comfortable playing them. And, uh, and so we'd, you know, we'd go and I'd try the popcorn out at the places we had all the time, so we <laughs> had to have something to eat along the way. We're ready to go, and the center jump goes to the Jefferson Jaguars. Your 1990 team was your last state tournament team. They were 23 and 3. The star player on that team was Mike Vandegaard, who's now an NBA scout. Three pointer missed for Irvin underneath a bump by Vandegaard, and the Metro Player of the Year nails two. Brent Irvin, John Carter, Dave Cicchini. Do you remember that season? Well, once again, I think if you go back and look at all of our teams, we had pretty good leadership, our captains, were good, mm -hmm. and they had good leadership there. Mm -hmm. And they were a hard, hard working group. In comes Vandegaard, the Metro Player of the Year, and the Jefferson Jaguars take a one point lead. Yeah, he was unbelievable, a tough kid. He's up there too, and one of those that are honored in the Basketball Hall of Fame here, and, and he deserves it. And he had a great career after that, really a good student too. You know what, it's a great sense of pride, you know, playing with friends throughout high school and having a lot of success and following in some great success along the way before us with multiple state championships and just being around your high school friends and working hard and putting the blood, sweat and tears in and, and being a program that you can be proud of and we won a bunch of games and we had a heck of a year and man, it just feels great. Did you know that that was going to be your last year? Uh, not really, I yeah. guess. I hadn't planned on it, no. Okay. Uh, in fact, when it was my last year, when I retired that year, I walked out of school the last day and I said, I enjoyed today. Yeah. So I wasn't the guy that was griping away, looking at the calendar and, and uh, trying to get out of it. I, I enjoyed my years of teaching and working with kids. There you see one of the masterminds there of Minnesota High School basketball, Jack Evans. How have you been able to just sustain the program from all of this success where you continued, you've continued to have that success? And the head Jefferson coach 
Jeff Evans, the Bloomington Jefferson Jaguars. When I was assisting him and when I played here too, I realized how it's a lot of hard work. It's fun, hard work, but I realized that you get to reap the benefits of that hard work and uh, no matter how talented you are, if you don't put the time in and the effort, um, you're not gonna have that success. And I just, we just try to keep the ball rolling with teaching kids good hard work uh, fundamentals and, and, uh, and trying to be as best as they can be. Jefferson will force Hopkins to play fundamental defense. They move the ball quickly, they're disciplined in their half court set. I mean, one of the great things is I think we grew a pretty strong friendship. Mm -hmm. And I think that helped a lot in, you know, you, you could disagree with each other, you could bring up points and say yes, no. And, and one of the great things about Jeff was, I mean, he allowed me to coach my sophomores. You know, he allowed Jimmy to have great input into what they were doing. Um, and we all brought different things to it. I hope one of the things that we don't hear is that why didn't we go out and recruit kids? We want our Jefferson kids to go out and get a chance to perform. It's their turn to play. And you can see a lot of kids as you go around and scout teams. I wish I had him playing for me, but that's not the way it works. Not in our philosophy anyhow. They were our kids. They weren't somebody that came in from someplace else. And uh, Jack ended up being retired as the uh, most successful state championship four of them at the time then nobody had ever done that before and they were all our kids they weren't somebody coming from someplace else and so they're so proud of that they were just the neighborhood kids that played for us and every kid that went there wanted to be a, a jefferson basketball player yeah. and wanted to give them that opportunity i don't want to take that away from them and you do that uh, you some kids better you're definitely better than somebody around but you got to live with yourself and I believe that Jeff, and Jeff of course is so humble he would never say this, but said, you can come here but you'll never play because he's going to play his Jefferson kids. And they clearly would have won the state championship yes. if that had happened. They were already a state tournament team. Yes. And he said, you can come but I will not play you. That was all set. Yeah. And I just think that that's where Jeff, you know, goes to the top of the front right. for what modeling for all of us. You know, you talked about the coaches, we talked about how it was the neighborhood kids who grew up together. And it was, it was a traveling team and, and watching Johnny win that championship and we were all after a, after, I, think we had a I think we had a traveling game during the state tournament even. We went to the tournament together, you know, watched that whole thing and ran on the floor together. And, you know, so it was that whole thing, you know, building up. For me, uh, it's a great thrill because my son Tommy grew up, he's a senior at Jefferson, playing basketball with David Kingry, Greg Montbrand, Stevie Hill, John Lynch, Nelson, Tommy Durlam, and the list line goes on and on and on. And to think when those little dudes, when I was watching them play all those years ago, would go on and, and win the championship. They all grew, my son didn't, but he was happy to be team manager and I'm thrilled for him. We played all the way up through our senior, same group of guys, knew each other at a very intimate level, right. had played different sports together. That's, you know, you, know, you don't see that now. I started playing with these guys in seventh grade when I moved here, and after the first or second year, where that was our goal, you know, and we'd come watch a game here, watch Mike Spencer play, dunk it on people, and be like, we want to, you know, we want to be in the state tournament, win the state. Uh, I think it's a good system because, you know, you, you work extra hard in your senior year because you know it's your last chance, so you give it everything you got, and that's why we did what we did. You really were loyal to seniors. Well, and fortunately, uh, you know, they were capable enough, uh, but. Yeah, if they could prove that they could play and they were senior, they were their turn to play. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel maybe that the seniors might have, uh, it was their last go, and so they were going to give you maybe just that a little bit more? Well, I hope so. I hope that they had dedication to do that, and uh, the fact that they were playing as seniors, and we didn't, we, we counted on them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we tried to, to build that philosophy all the way through, that now you're a senior, you, know, you got you to gotta show us that. You, okay. you deserve that. Getting some hugs along the bench from Jack Evans and his dad. 
Go out with two straight state titles. That'll be a great moment for our father, huh? That's kind of what we hope is that the kind of family atmosphere here is they just we walk in the next group and we look for that leadership from our seniors and um, these guys felt right at home day one of their freshman year that this now they're part of the program because of the welcoming group of seniors that we had that year. I remember growing up, like the the older classes, almost, like seemed to want to intimidate you and you know throw the elbows or do whatever. And uh, for us, it was just going out and just battling for the sake of battling. Uh, there wasn't anything personal about it. We just loved going out there. Thanks for joining us, John. This is what it's all about: the state tournament. Seven different guys hit three pointers on their squad, and I I did my job. Solomon was averaging 20, 28.8. I held him to 28. So. <laughs> Did my job. <laughs> Under his average. Under his average. These kids are pretty sharp, yeah. I mean, every day you had to throw something new at them and they could pick it up. Some kids need repetition, repetition, repetition. But they, we did a lot of things both offensively and defensively with those kids because they were yeah. pretty sharp. Lead is five for the Royals. Nice hump fake and inside scoring is Augustine. Omi and Augustine and Wheeler. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe Vaudre played Baudre. with them a little bit when he was younger and stuff like that. And that team was unbelievable. Inside, ball taken away by Sakura, and now here comes Omi. Jaguars will push. Nobody stopped the ball, and there's Wheeler. Um, just Again, not any Division I guys or anything like that, but just tough, disciplined, um, you know, super unselfish team. They were very good. With Bloomington Jefferson, they have a big man inside, and Brian Sikora is as good as it gets. 20 points, eight rebounds in the semifinal against North. He's a big physical athlete. I think one of the biggest things that he gave to us was the confidence, because he always had, you know, you could always rely on Brian, and that gives everybody else confidence. I mean, Brian Scar was a, a scorer, and he, he did a lot of things, a lot of things on his own, and he was such a good athlete and good player. But I remember in the region final game against a very, very good Eden Prairie team, uh, we were up by maybe five or something with like three minutes left, and one of their big guys was guarding Brian. And on his own, he just he got the ball, he demanded the ball, he brought it out towards half court, and just sat there, he sat on it, and, and said, "Come and get us, we're up." And you know, yep. that, that's didn't come from anybody on the bench. That was him saying. We got this game in control. In the royal blue with the white trim. Inside, Omi to Sakura. Yeah, that's Good right. publicity. That's right. Nice drive by Dan Wheeler. I remember walking in the locker room at the, was at the Excel Center. Mm -hmm. yep. Walking in the locker room after the game, and the uh, kids were all sitting there. And I remember all I said was, holy smokes, we're in the state championship. Mm -hmm. Wow, I can't believe it. and he was watching a Jefferson team play. And he said, you know, he said, look at them. They're never out of position in their zone. And I think that's coaching right there. Sure. Jefferson with a two point lead and the surgeons are at it again. I don't know what else to call them. They play like surgeons. Every time we played Jefferson, I'd always tell our kids, they're not gonna allow you to do what you want to do and what you normally do. You know what I mean? Like, you're gonna be well scouted and they're gonna take stuff away. Jefferson will force Hopkins to play fundamental defense. They move the ball quickly, they're disciplined in their half court set. Uh, Jefferson just, first of all, really well coached. I mean, crazy how well coached they were. You might get a free dinner if Evs walks yeah, in. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm just telling you that uh, yeah. you weren't gonna see mistakes. No. You know, force the other team to make the mistakes. They related with us well, and then there was times where they'd get on us just yeah. to make us better people. Definitely prepared us like the best they could, and Evs, having been around for so long, um, just knew 
what to do in every situation. I should mention that Jack Evans will be going down in history tonight as the only coach to ever win four state championships. A large part of the reason that we have the success that we had is that this guy would never panic. I mean, like I said, the prior late game, we had to call time, we were down 12 to two, and they were scoring layups, and we're throwing the ball in the stands and looking like idiots out there. He calls timeout, and he, and he didn't panic, and he just said, okay guys, look, here, here's what you're doing, here's what you gotta do. And I, I think that calming effect that Mr. Evans gave us uh, as high school kids that could have easily just panicked out there uh, in front of 15,000 people, I think that was a, a big reason why we were able to do what we did. Having two coaches is crazy over 50 years where you know that they've had all this experience with the same program. So being able to be a part of that for our senior year is nice. It's really amazing. Jack Evans coaching here and then his son for over 50 years is unbelievable. And uh, they're legends. I can remember the first game that Jeff coached, a ninth grade coach, ninth grade game. He came home and he had to sweat through his t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Mankato West, a triple overtime win against Udina over the ninth grade tournament over Richfield night. This is hard work. I sweat through a shirt, the sweat rings down to here, and, but I thought this is fun. Just the energy and the, the buzz you got from doing that was just can't be matched. If you got Jeff to stand up and bark something yeah. out, then it was like, ah, That's we did something too. good. <laughs> we got him riled up a All little right. bit. I know this guy here on the other side of me does a lot of work for the team besides siring uh, half of the history of Jefferson High, but Jake, what are your primary areas of responsibility? Well, primarily uh, kind of organizing the scouting materials as much as anything and, uh, and working with a JV. Every time the JV plays a game, that's my responsibility to coach them before the varsity game. But uh, he's a beautiful man to work with and he lets me coach and uh, it's a very nice situation, obviously. I was fortunate to have someone like Jake because our philosophy was we're going to give our kids the best opportunity right. to win a ball game. I told him to begin with, uh, you know, that I got a big mouth, being that's, an Irishman. That's true, that's true, yeah. And a big mouth, and so I'm going to say something, and when I think it, uh, during practice or whatever, and so, and he said, well, go ahead, say what you think, and, you know, be straightforward and honest about it, and uh, again, uh, working with such a good coach was uh, a tremendous opportunity for me. And that's one thing that I learned from watching my dad and Jake work together all those years. They became pretty good friends. And I think to have coaches you can do, if you can have any success as your team, having that tight knit group of players you want, it's got to start from the coaching staff. Um, I think there's some high expectations kind of that the seniors had set on themselves. And I think you guys, the coaches, did as well as like, hey, we want to make this a powerful, we're good, you know, this is a good unit. We had a lot of good players, um, a lot of good role players, and you guys set some good expectations kind of coming in. The big man in the middle, number 45, Jefferson's all-time leading scorer and rebounder. There he is, the seven-footer Cole Aldridge. Yeah. The state of Minnesota hadn't seen Cole Aldridge play yet. Sure. And that was his, I think it was junior year, he was a little dinged up, and they wanted to see what this kid was. We finally made it to the state tournament, so in the, those first round games were not televised. So a lot of people came to the game just to see, mm -hmm. see what this person was that was signed and sealed, ready to go to KU. And, so that was a fun game. The matchup tonight, Jefferson and Minnetonka, the Section 2 championship. I mean, we walk through that gym and it's already packed house. And you know, you just, the, the adrenaline, you got to get goosebumps walking through. Short, Arapate ahead of the pack. Oh, oh, and You go to Tucker on the last possession. Another great catch, another dunk. Off for Erickson, guarded by Christensen. The left-hander gets in the lane and he gets a rude awakening. Well, we use Cole for everything. We use him to, to break through our pressure release on any full court press we had. And uh, so he had it. We asked him to do a lot. Aldrich spinning, free throw line, jumper is down. He's got 30. To rebound, get the outlet pass, and then the teams are pressing us, stick around and help break he pressure. He's a screener on the, on the pressure on our press break. Yeah, so yeah. We, we asked a lot of him. So it wasn't just him running based on the baseline. He did a lot of stuff between the fall lines that a lot of big kids don't, don't do. And, uh, are asked to do. For tonight, it's all about Jaguars. They got it done. They're heading to Williams Arena. You can see the celebration. <sighs> Man, I, I'm, I'm so happy we won the game and now we're in state, but also, I am exhausted. This is one of the groups we were coaching effort. Yeah. And we did all kinds of things on this in games and stuff, not comp competition games, just games with the kids that get to realize that you got to rely on him. You, you can't do, you gotta rely, rely on that kid, you gotta rely on that kid, and 
just things that's trying to get the kids to buy into the teamwork. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, about 75% through our season, something just clicked. Was loose ball. Not many times at the end of a season when you ask a coach what's your favorite play of the whole entire year, it was getting that loose ball. <laughs> I mean, that, that just kind of turned our mm -hmm. our season, <laughs> something as insignificant mm -hmm. as that, kind of kids saw him diving like that and wow, that's mm -hmm. the kind of effort it takes and kids bought in and, uh, and the things ended up pretty well. Yeah. I mean, you guys had an aura. Did you feel that at all? Were you aware of that feeling? Um, I mean, we worked hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's been a, that aura is baloney unless you really work hard and have good kids. You put that combination together, you always got a chance. But I think uh, <laughs> Jack demanded that, and that's what we got. That was the aura in my mind. It was hard work and good kids. I think everybody thought it was the best program in the country, and it was proving it year in and year out. And coming to the games as a little kid, just seeing the success and just knowing uh, you were going to have that same opportunity when you got here, I think was really something that, that people, you know, looked forward to and really cared about and understood the, you know, tradition that, you know, Coach Evans and Coach Lynch had brought amongst the years. Um, I remember just coming back when I was younger and watching like Cole Alder, just kind of the first team I remember, mm -hmm. so just things like that. Um, and then just hearing stories from like my uncle a little bit, Mike Vandegaard. Oh, yeah. Um, so just like hearing some of the history there. Um, so there's sure. a lot of tradition in this program. Jack, we, we've said throughout the tournament that a lot of people didn't expect you to go as far. You've got to be especially proud of the fact that, that these guys really came through and played their best basketball in March. Well, that's pretty good credit to these guys, the way they did it. A heck of a job. All right, give us one word that described the Jefferson teams that you coached against. Discipline. Discipline. Prepared. Prepared. Well, I just think of respect when I come in here, just from obviously from the history, but as I had mentioned before with Jeff, and he's on a pedestal as high as at the height of it with how he goes about his business. All their kids always perform at a high level. They're, you know, sportsmanship. I think this is the program that is really the epitome of all of those, to be honest with you. I don't know when I was coaching if I ever coached in this gym. When was this open? 70. 70? Mm -hmm. No, then I must have. I've blocked them out too, lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think over the years, we've been blessed to have people, they wanted to be part of the program, and they worked hard to, to make the, the grade and uphold the, the status of what was going on. Well, if you look back over the years, we've been blessed with an awful lot of good athletes here, and otherwise they wouldn't be talking about this type of thing either. 